Well, in what could be a big breakthrough in indigenous cancer treatments, India's first homegrown CAR T cell therapy for cancer treatment, this therapy has been jointly developed by IIT and Tata Memorial. We are joined by Dr. Gaurav Narula from one of the India's prestigious cancer hospitals, Tata Memorial, also to talk about uh, what does this mean for the country by and large uh, in, in cancer treatment and in terms of making us understand, Dr. Narula, thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast. Just to break this further for, for viewers of DD India to understand uh, what makes this a big breakthrough and give us more details about it. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, so this therapy is actually uh, different in the way that we use the body's own immune system to uh, tackle cancer. And it involves some very complex technology because we uh, take the immune cells from the patient. So it's very highly personalized and it can be used back only for that patient. And these are genetically modified outside uh, the body in a lab or in a manufacturing facility to attack or recognize and attack a particular kind of cancer, in this case, B-cell leukemias and lymphomas. And then we give it back to the patient uh, and it helps to clear the cancer. Now, this has been... A, uh, seem to be very effective in uh, patients who, who actually had no lines of therapy left. Now, we must understand that these and leukemia and lymphoma are actually quite curable by currently available therapies like chemotherapy and transplant. But when these stop working in some of these patients, 20 to 30 percent patients, then they have no lines of therapy left. And mm. in this situation, these therapies have shown remarkable responses. So that's why it's such a breakthrough. And in terms of affordability also? Oh, yes, indeed. So, actually, these therapies are terribly expensive. Mm. Uh, when we started working, uh, IIT Bombay and us, when we started working on this project around 2015 together, uh, at that time, well, there was no available therapy in the world. They were all in early phase clinical trials. But even at that time, we understood that uh, uh, when it's developed, it's going to be terribly expensive and uh, it'll never come to our country. So, that's when we thought that, you know, unless we uh, develop it uh, inside India, <laughs> and make it in India and know the understand the technology in India, but only then will it be affordable and that's what's actually happened. So now it's uh, available now. Uh, the uh, My colleague is a uh, collaborator in the uh, Indian Institute of Technology from the company called Immunoact, mm -hmm. which has now got the marketing approval for it. And it's being available at uh, one-tenth the cost of what it is in the West. So it's nearly four and a half crores and upwards in the U.S., and many European countries don't have it because of the price, but over here it's selling for between 30 to 40 lakhs from Immuno Act. So mm. that's, a, that's a terrific achievement which could only happen because of Absolutely. the Absolutely. Terrific achievement and that, you know, a layman would just want to understand that are we now looking at the possibility of the complete cure to cancer? <laughs> How I wish indeed that was possible. Uh, isn't that everyone's uh, dream and surely for us too? But I think we are a long way away from that. This is, it, uh, this is a spectacular breakthrough technology with a lot of potential. But as of now, its proof lies in only a handful of cancers, mostly blood cancers. Uh, there are trials going around all over the world in difficult to treat cancers. Many of them are showing promising results. But when we say promising in medicine, we are talking about 8 to 10 years before it can be used at the clinic. Okay. Hopefully, because there's so much advancement happening, we might see uh, breakthroughs in other areas uh, in the coming years. We ourselves are working on it, and so are many others in the world, but now we are also in it. And uh, this putting India in the elite nation's uh, global map uh, where uh, gene therapy has been used or is being used. Oh, yes, indeed. So, uh, actually, uh, in 2015, when we, were, when we started out, there was just a handful of trials going on in the U.S., but by that time, and the responses were so great, even in these early phase trials, the race began. Uh, by 2018-19, China had overtaken the U.S. in the number of clinical trials going on. And by the end of 2022, I think there were more than three to 4,000 trials going on around the world. But all these trials were focused in a handful of countries. So apart from the U.S. and China and a few European countries, uh, there was hardly anybody else who had any uh, therapy close to approval. And uh, uh, so, yes, so we are in an elite uh, club now uh, and we have done it over here. We had some guidance from the National Cancer Institute in Bethesda, but it was in the terms of uh, knowledge mentoring. Uh, we didn't get any research funding or any materials from them. So it's entirely made uh, by ourselves. 
So yes, so we are in an elite club now. You know that uh, yes, and, and and that question on complete cure to uh, cancer, but at least now there is this new ray of hope through gene therapy. Yes, it it has opened up a whole new avenue. Okay. So up to now, we have been treating cancer with uh, chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery, and these are still very effective and the recommended cures for most of these cancers. Uh, what this has opened up is an avenue. And uh, hopefully in the coming decade, we will see many more uh, cell and gene therapies coming up for uh, some other blood cancers initially and some gene disorders. So they're already on the way. These trials are already happening, even in India as we speak. And uh, uh, more are planned on the corner. We ourselves uh, are planning to launch some other clinical trials for cell therapy probably later this year. So it's opened up a whole new avenue. So there's a lot of promise. Uh, but word of caution, uh, it may not work for everything. Yeah. We will find out when we try them out and that will take time. And when, when uh, what is the kind of timeline, doctor, we are looking at? Normally in medicine, a timeline from a discovery in the lab to translation to uh, approved therapy in the clinic takes uh, anywhere between 10 to 20 years. Uh, we were able to do this pretty fast uh, because uh, we started working in 2015 and Immunoac got approval by 2023. So in a short span of eight, just over eight to nine years, uh, this is actually quite unprecedented. But uh, this kind of thing will not happen every time. Right. What we have now is we have the capacity and the platform. So we hope that the next ones will also come out faster. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. uh, uh, capacity and uh, there's also this conversation about uh, this uh, triggering, triggering new startups ecosystem, particularly in the healthcare. Yes, yes. So actually, this is something which is desperately needed. Uh, I think, you know, our healthcare industry has worked mostly on a revenue model which depends upon footfall. Whereas if you see the healthcare industry in the West, in the world, countries works on innovation. Uh, the big money in healthcare comes from innovation. And unless you innovate, uh, you will always be uh, chasing smaller things. This is an example of innovation from academic centers. The therapy was developed in IIT Bombay in Dr. Rahul Pugwa's lab. And then after that, we worked together to bring it to the clinic. But, you know, these are academic institutions who did it. And then Dr. Rahul Pugwa opened this company, Immunoact Startup, which has successfully taken it. This model should be replicated uh, in uh, in different institutes and allow the next lot of ideas to make it rapidly to the clinic. We need an entire ecosystem hmm. of academic, uh, major academic centers and industry partnering to bring these therapies. These require investment, even though our therapy is cheaper, but it requires, still requires a lot of funds. And those kind of funds are not easy to come by in India. Okay. Uh, so it requires, it requires uh, industry academic collaboration of a degree which we are only beginning to start seeing now uh, in India. At Hopefully, least, uh, this will become a template. Absolutely. And why not? Uh, at least the beginning has been made and that too, it's, it's a huge step. Uh, you, Of course, uh, you and other scientists and doctors uh, from both these prestigious institutes are part of the core team. So as a doctor, uh, what would be your message uh, to those uh, families or perhaps those who are battling cancer? Would you like to give some message and as a parting note uh, but, so so you know it is actually uh, the lack of and loss of options uh, when uh, children especially uh, reach to this stage in the therapy when we were having to turn them back and go home which is what uh, drove uh, me and my friends and colleagues to somehow get this therapy anyhow into india and you know we went ahead with a passion regardless uh, kind of attitude we were not going to stop till it was here but uh, but still, the sad reality is that uh, it's uh, applicable only to one type of cancer. And we are hoping that we can bring it to ev to all those patients where it might work uh, as fast as possible. It takes time, but there's hope. And uh, we are hoping that we can uh, take this forward. Uh, it's one step at a time, one patient at a time. Uh, yes. So we just hope to continue. Uh, once again, huge congr congratulations to you and your team from Tata and the other institute. Also, thank you very much uh, at the same time for joining us on this broadcast and sharing these very critical details. Thank you, sir.